Hey guys, it's Charlie, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to supercharge your AI generated images, whether that's with Dolly, Mid Journey, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you guys how to make them your own. You don't want to be that designer that slaps an AI generated image on a t shirt or Instagram and they're like, hey, that's my original work. Trust me, it's not a good look. So I'm going to help you fix that. Before we begin, did you know that Kittle now has a powerful AI tool to unleash your creative potential? Simply sign up, create a new project, and start typing any prompt to bring your ideas to life. And just like that, I have a wolf portrait. Pretty cool. With Kittle's categories, you have even more control over your generations. Let's try a vector style, for example. I want a bear logo. This wasn't quite what I was looking for, so let's try a more detailed prompt. Maybe I can type in minimal bear logo and see what that does. When you're ready, just click the generate image button. Within seconds, it generated a new logo, and I like this one a lot more. And I definitely recommend you check out the Kittle AI templates that are already available at your fingertips to save you time on your design. I can spend hours on this section. Let's check out this Phoenix design. Simply click use this design. Let's change the name from Phoenix to Charlie and see what that looks like. All you have to do is left click on the text and you can start typing out anything. And if you don't like the color of something, you just click on it and you can change it on the right hand side under the settings. So what are you waiting for? Let your ideas run wild with Kittle AI using the link in the description below. So I have my image here and the first thing I want to do is remove the background so I can start separating it and adding my own elements, right? Because that's what makes this truly your own. So what I ended up doing was using a threshold layer above my main layer. With that threshold layer, I can make this image more of a silhouette, fill in all the areas with a hard round brush and then um, you know select just the black in the center to uh, use that as my selection if that makes sense so if you try to use the Adobe select subject it doesn't always work the best which is why I'm using this method instead on my next image I have these robots that I use mid-journey to generate and um, I'm going to use select subject for this one to remove it and it did a pretty good job so I'm able to keep that selection I do notice that the back of the head of the robot is missing so I can just easily fix that no problem and then let's go to unsplash com I'm gonna find some clouds these ones actually look really nice let's copy that paste it in Photoshop and then I'm just gonna duplicate that cloud layer and flip it vertically that way I can use it in more of a symmetrical way and to remove the background I'm just actually going to use a quick selection tool which is found right under the magic wand tool and it looks like it does a pretty good job so I'm gonna stick with that and then we can just select the back of the AI's head with an ellipse tool and then I'll probably just fill that in with the clone stamp tool or just paint it in. Really, you can do it both ways. And I think it looks pretty good. So we're gonna keep that. Now that the robot layer is fixed, we can literally just copy that layer and flip it horizontally. And that's going to give us like this really nice depth. And since I have that background layer, I'm gonna go ahead and use that as a layer mask. So I'm gonna make a selection of it and then add a layer mask to my robots because that's going to basically give them the illusion that they're sitting inside of the cloud. And then using the same layer mask, I can honestly just paint the Android's heads back in and we'll do the same thing for the lady. So I could just copy that layer mask over and have the same exact one. And then on the background layer, I'm gonna duplicate it and add a Gaussian blur. That way I can make it look a little softer and give it a little bit more dimension. I'm gonna have two different blur layers. So one is going to be a little bit lighter on the blur side and then one's gonna be a little heavier on the blur. And this will help build it up gradually. And then to take away the harsh edge of my background layer, I'm gonna add an outer glow and let's just make it a little bit lighter color. That way it kind of just makes it look like it's actually glowing a little bit more. And I think this looks pretty good. So earlier I clipped my main image to the threshold layer that we made. And now I'm just going to use my eraser tool. I can also use a mask. It doesn't really matter. I already have a mask, so I could have just use that but um i'm erasing all the shapes around her head and then i'm just going to use my clone stamper tool to get rid of the rest of that that geometry on her face and hair the only problem with doing it this way is it does take a long time just fair warning as i'm using the clone stamper tool i'm noticing that i'm losing a lot of detail in her hair but that's okay because i can always bring some other hair in and just basically bring back the volume of the hair i'm going to use my rectangle marquee tool to copy the right eye and then flip it and then just basically use a soft round brush to mask it out with that layer mask. And that actually looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. And then I found this other image. I'm just gonna mask in the parts that I want and then change the color balance. And that actually looks pretty good. I think it gives it a little bit more texture, which is nice. I found these ethernet cables on Envato Elements. So I'm gonna import those into Photoshop and just start adding them to my composition. And I think I'm gonna end up cutting the end off so I can kind of make it look like it's going into her brain 
which I think looks pretty cool. So that looks nice. And then I'm gonna use a layer mask to kind of soften the edges so it doesn't appear so harsh. And then I'll use that same soft round brush to create shadows and a base shadow. That way it looks like it's actually attaching to her and not just sitting on top. I'm gonna duplicate the main ethernet layer and just add a color overlay of black and then add a Gaussian blur to make it look more like a shadow. And at this point I could just add a layer mask and mask in the parts I want and lower the opacity and I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go to my camera raw filter on that main ethernet layer and just make some adjustments to the saturation and the hue to make it look a little bit more unique. We can also just add a hue and saturation layer above the ethernet cable to change the color to more of like a red tint since our background is more teal. Now I can group the ethernet cable and flip it so I have it on the other side. I have this other ethernet cable in a different position. That's why I love Envato Elements. And I'm just gonna use my soft round brush again to paint in those shadows and entry points and do the same thing pretty much. And only this time I think I'm gonna change the color of this cable to something else. Now I'm gonna duplicate that ethernet cable and skew it a little bit and make it black and add a Gaussian blur so it looks like an actual shadow. And I kinda don't want it on their heads because I don't, I don't know, it just looks odd. And now I just wanna copy everything I just did and flip it so I have it on the other side as well. And now I'm just gonna press T on my keyboard and type out some text. I think I want it to say artificial intelligence takeover or something like that. And the font I'm using for this is called Denton, in case you guys care. It's a really great font. I definitely recommend you check it out. I want the text to sit under the cables. I know I can probably intertwine them, but I'm not going to do that. I kind of like that they're on top. And then I'll have takeover stay on top of everything. That way um, I have a little bit more depth right there as well. To make my text pop out a little bit more, I'm just gonna add some drop shadows to them at about 90 degrees. That way they stand out a little bit more. And then I'm gonna put this timer that I found on Envato Elements on her forehead and add an inner shadow with some minor like level adjustments. And to me, this looks pretty good. So I am going to keep it. I think it needs something else though. And then I'm gonna add a layer above this timer and make it red and change the blend mode of that layer to linear dodge add. That way it glows a little bit more. I wanna type out something else. So I'm gonna type out, they want your jobs at the bottom. That way I have a little bit more going on. Um, I just think it needs more for some reason. And I'll probably change the text color to more of that like cable color that we have at the top there. And then at the top, I'm just gonna type out the gray and use the same exact color, so I'll copy that over. And that actually looks pretty good. And now I'm just gonna apply a pattern overlay above everything to give it some texture and change the blend mode to hard mix. This will make your lines look extremely sharp, which can be good, but it also can be bad. The only thing I really wanna change on this is change the scale to about 50, and that makes the dot pattern a lot smaller. And then we will need to dial back the sharpness in a second. And the problem with hard mix is it makes everything super bright, so I'm gonna apply a levels adjustment and bring those midtones down a little bit. That way it kind of offsets that overexposed look that we had before. This part's kind of hard to explain, but I'm gonna have a halftone pattern for each object, if that makes sense. So each object, I'm gonna make a mask of it on that halftone group. That way the halftone only affects that object. So hopefully you're following, but we can make a more detailed video breaking this down. And this gives me full control over each object. So the ethernet cables, the lady, the AI robot. And then in each halftone pattern group, I'm also going to add a grain group and add a new layer and fill it with 50% gray. And from here, we can add some noise to it from filter menu. And this will give us a little bit more detail in our halftone pattern and also help break it up because it is sharp right now. And then I'll change the blend mode of that grain layer to overlay. And that will basically make it blend into everything beautifully. Now I'm doing the same thing for the lady and she has her own halftone group again so I can change all the settings if I need to on the fly which is really helpful instead of having one halftone pattern over everything. All right, now it's time to duplicate the group once again and do the same thing for the AI robot. So I'm gonna make a selection of them and use that selection as a layer mask for my halftone group, which again has a grain layer and a level adjustment and a human saturation adjustment as well. And then also the fill of the halftone pattern. I put it at around 90%. That way it's not coming on too strong. And uh, this looks pretty good to me. All right, so I imported a texture. Um, let's change the blend mode to screen. And then from here, I'm gonna rasterize it and go up to image, adjustments, desaturate. And then I'll press command L on my keyboard to add a levels adjustment. This way we can take the midtones down and dial them back a little bit and blend it into our image a little better. Keep in mind the texture is clipped to our main design group. So everything's in one group and the texture's clipped to that. That way it doesn't affect the background. And then I'm just gonna make a cancel icon real quick. So it, all I need is a circle with a stroke and a rectangle. And then, uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. And then we can combine the rectangle and circle together, to rotate it about 45 degrees and then put that in place. It looks a little long. Yeah, it's a little long. So I'm just gonna use my 
probably a racer tool and just erase the outside and make it fit. And then let's go ahead and resize it and put it right next to they want your jobs or maybe under it. Yeah, I think under will look better. Yeah, see that just looks better to me. So I'm gonna keep it and just make sure it's centered. Now imagine for a second, I took the original AI image and slapped that on a shirt or posted it to Instagram and then just called that done versus the new version that I just created making it my own. You see the difference? It's a lot more impactful. It's not hard to supercharge your AI images and make them truly unique in your own way just by doing what I did in this video. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, leave a comment. I might read it in the next video. Also smash that like button. I love seeing that. It makes me so motivated, but I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.